Hey everybody, it's Eddie J on Crypto for Grow My Bag TV. Hope you're having a good one. So there's a lot of news that we have to pour over. The first one is Powell's going to speak at at 10 a.m. this morning. That's after we receive the PPI numbers. I'm not expecting anything good out of that. Yes, he was a bit dovish the last time. Um, he might be a little bit more in the know today um, with the numbers. So that might you know kind of foretell what's going to come out tomorrow. They've already removed uh, coffee from the from the CPI numbers. Um, there are a lot of people talking about why they would remove coffee. I think there's one reason, one reason only. Um, coffee is mad expensive. And then you have greedflation piling on top of that. None of that is cool, right? So when you when you sit and you really think about that, you have to really contemplate the idea that there's just too much going on at one po- at one time. So when you th- when you think about how those numbers hit, it's kind of like yeah, greedflation. Companies are taking too much profit, raising prices too much, trying to mask it and disguise it as regular inflation when it's not. When you're pulling you know major profits, right? When you're pulling major profits, one would think that's gouging. It's not necessarily so that people are buying more. It's that they have to spend more to get what they're going to get. See what I mean? And some would say, well, that's the definition of inflation. Yes, it would be if the profit margins were the same. Just saying. What is, what's up next? A Chinese Bitcoin miner has been shut down. It's called Mine One. And it's because, and I, and I don't even know how it was actually allowed to begin with, right? Because... The idea is that you have a Chinese company that's right next, literally, literally right next door to a missile site, a nuclear missile site. What good could have come of that ever? I, I think it was dumb to let them let them be there to begin with. I think it's dumb to shut them down. It should never have been a situation we were in. So there's that. I mean, just think about the computing power that it takes to mine Bitcoin and take a step back and think about what kind of computing power that you know is sitting there that can be used for something else. Just saying, we should be paying attention to a lot more than that. Should never have happened. Should never, but never have happened. Um, USDT is running on top of TongueCoin now. Why is that? Tether wants to get entrenched with the 900 million and growing users on Telegram makes sense because i want you to think about this what's going on right now is <clears throat> excuse me you've got a lot of dapps web3 applications a whole bunch of stuff that's being built for telegram a lot of people are thinking well i don't know why you would do that because there are 900,000 reasons why 900 million reasons why and 900 million accounts on telegram all doing various things on telegram some of those are going to be games. Some of those are going to be dApps. There are a lot of things that are going on. And there's a lot of reasons why you would want that to happen, right? So let's start putting on our thinking caps and start thinking about why would you want to be involved in that? Because it's that's a growing market. They're seeing the numbers right there. They know it's a growing market. You have more and more people hopping onto Telegram. Um, funny side story. I got approached by somebody to do a... Um, the collaboration was kind of vague. Didn't know what the collaboration was all about. And they said, oh, you've got to hop on Telegram. Oh, yeah, nah. <laughs> Usually if I'm doing business with somebody, it's we have a conversation over DMs on like Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. And then we have a conference call. I'm not moving over to, to Telegram. We can use Zoom. We can use Teams. I like to see faces. I like to know what's going on. Um Suffice it to say, I'm probably not going to be able to take part in this, in this, you know, what could be a good opportunity just because I have a funny feeling about people that ask me to move to Telegram when I'm already communicating with you via a secure space. Um, So, yeah, not not happy with that. Too much masking going on. So uh, I'll probably bow out of that one. Something else that's going on. Grayscale has a good report out. And it's talking about Bitcoin layer twos like BitVM and how they could really open up and expand Bitcoin's use case scenario. That's good. 
I think it's good. Don't get me wrong. I think I think that you know runes is good. Ordinals is good. I think there are a lot of technologies going on in the in the Bitcoin space that are good. I just contemplate what kind of impact they're going to have on the network, the cost of the you know of all the trades going forward, and that's not really how I use Bitcoin. That's a lot. That's not how you know big money uses Bitcoin. Big money uses Bitcoin to leverage, right? Um, and I'm trying to move in that direction. So I don't, I don't know about you know those use cases and everything else. And the only way that we'll find out, time will tell us. That's it. Time will tell us. What else is going on? <clears throat> The next one up, Coinbase. Actually, no. Let's go, let's go over to Coin CDX. Coin D, Coin DCX out of India. Um, they they're launching an Octo ecosystem, and, and I, I'm trying to understand why they would call it the Octo ecosystem. I think there's actually a company called Octo. I don't think that's a smart name, um, but they're launching an Octo ecosystem, and it's meant to expand. Uh, Web3 availability out there and, you know, just re- you know, expand its reach, that kind of thing. And I'm like, that's not a bad thing. That's actually pretty good. I mean, India is not a small country. So, yeah, that's a pretty good thing. Um, I'm also talking to one of my friends. I want to I really want to do a, uh, a cricket project. I really want to do a cricket project. And uh, she's been doing research on cricket. You know, her and her husband are like serious cricket heads. So I, I, want, I really want to do a project with them. So I want to see what see what we can do with that. Just as an you know as an as an aside, what else is going on? We've got Coinbase having a major outage. Now I was just talking about this with a few of my friends, and I was saying that um, I don't know that it's a great idea, right, um, to leave my money on on crypto. You know, on one of these you know centralized exchanges. I said, I only use decentralized exchanges as a pass through because I've got something going on or I'm holding a very little amount of money on there or digital assets on there because I have something going on, right? Yesterday, I I completed my transactions and I said, okay, I'm done with my transactions. Let me, you know, close out. So I closed out. I think I had five bucks left after all my transactions on on uh, Coinbase. So I didn't close my account. I just finished my transactions. Overnight, three hour outage. Three hour outage. Now, imagine if you were on Coinbase and you wanted to make a trade. You know, just 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 pretend it was you know Floki. Just. just I don't know if if you can even trade Floki on Coinbase, but let's just pretend because Floki went up like. 10% at some point and you're trying to you're trying to cash out and you couldn't and then because you couldn't you lost the opportunity you see where this is headed this is why I don't really keep things on there I keep things my non-custodial wallet that didn't go down <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean I'm just saying you know my non-custodial wallet didn't go down I didn't have an outage that's what I'm talking about I think that, you know, sexes have their own place. Dexes have their own place. Um, custodial, non-custodial wallets have their own places. I think you need to rethink how you leverage those various wallets and, you know, what you want to do. For me, yeah, I'm not keeping I'm not keeping anything significant on any one of those platforms. And the only reason why is because if I want to execute, I have very... If I'm holding my keys, I have various options by which I can actually make a trade, right? And realize gains, um, decrease risk, because maybe maybe something's coming down, you wanna decrease, decrease that risk, right? So you've got your own stop loss that's in, and then boom, it's time to sell. That's what I'm talking about. That's really what I'm talking about. So yeah, Coinbase going down was not, a, not, not awesome at all. Right. Um, Paradigm has introduced blockchain block trading for Bitcoin options. I'm sorry, for altcoin options. Here are the altcoins Solana, XRP, and Matic. And it's all on Derbit. And I'm sitting back and I'm going, that's very interesting. 
that's very interesting because you to to do something like that you've got to understand like is there slippage is there not slippage what's the opportunity where they saw that there were there is a little bit of slippage and i said okay great there's a reason why they did it right i wonder how i'm gonna have to pay attention to see well you know how's that working out how's that working out what's the usefulness of you know of that particular new service so i'm, I'm finding it to be to be interesting you know when you look at Excuse me. When you look at all these financial vehicles that are going on in crypto, I want you to also take a look at all the financial vehicles that happen with fiat and see if you see a correlation, a one for one. It's the same. You're seeing a lot of a lot of different, you know, tools and, and things come out like this one that, you know, are similar to Forex plays that are similar to other financial vehicles that happen in the fiat space. Just saying, every time I think about a CBDC, I think about what's already going on in the crypto world that a CBDC would bring to the table. Just what are you doing? There's nothing. There's nothing. You want to stop an account? I have a big issue with, you know, Big Brother over you know, looking over the shoulder. Well, Tether just killed, just killed, what, 14 different accounts that were tied to hackers? Right, I think it was like five point something million that they were they were able to hold. That can happen really, really fast. They get word. They work with you know Tether works with various all of them, all the stable companies. They work with you know com, you know governments all around the world. You know with regard to sanctions and everything else. This isn't the first time that Tether has helped out a government or helped out businesses. It's not the first time. So whenever I see, you know, fingers being pointed at Tether, I sit back and I go, but they're doing a lot in the compliance space. Like they're doing a lot to be compliant. They're doing a lot to be compliant, let alone, you know, what they're doing to be active, you know, with law enforcement to stop people from doing nefarious things. Just saying. So I, I I sit back and I wonder about how's that equate in your head that you know you want to go after Tether. And the fact is, I'm I, I was saying I was talking about this last night during the members only video. Um, there seems to be a lot of uh, a lot of rah rah going on between you know everybody looking at what Brad Garlinghouse said about Tether and then Tether responding to Brad Garlinghouse. And I'm, I'm and I'm here to say pause for a second. I don't think Brad Garlinghouse was trying to spread FUD. I don't think Brad Garlinghouse was trying to go up against Tether. That's not what he was saying. What he was saying was, is that the United States has bills, at least one, at least one, that basically points a finger directly at algorithmic stablecoins, of which Tether is the largest in the world. Tether's the largest stablecoin, period, in the world. It also happens to be an algorithmic stablecoin. That Brad wasn't talking out of the side of his neck. He was actually stating something that is true, that even I've been saying for a while now. The U.S. government is going after Tether. Straight up. I mean, what else can you say about that? Now, here's what's funny. The SEC has already deemed, a coin that's not out yet, has already deemed the stable coin that's being proposed by uh, Ripple as being an unregistered security already. And mind you, they're looking at creating that stable coin based on dollar backed reserves, not algorithmic. So. Is the SEC just going after Ripple for the sake of going after Ripple? Remember those court documents? That's what those court documents contained. So I'm sitting back and I'm just going, why? Why? Right? So that would mean that what uh, circle in the United States is the only stable coin standing? That's what I think about. That's actually really big news. That's something that we should all be kind of sitting back and kind of scratching our heads trying to understand. Because I want to understand how is going after algorithmic stablecoins um, 
for the good of the people. Now, they're going to point point the finger over at Terra Luna, a name that I couldn't remember last night. <laughs> I got it at the end, but it took me a minute. Um, they're going to point the finger at Terra Luna and say, see, that's why. That's why we're going to protect we're going to protect you, at, you know, against this. I'm sitting back and I'm kind of going, um, it's the world's most used stable coin. The world's most used stable coin. Algorithmic fiat backed whatever it is the most used by and i don't mean by a little bit i mean by leaps and bounds leaps and bounds it's like jupiter or saturn compared to like neptune that's the difference between it and the number two just saying i think they've got like 70 percent, and the next one's got 20 that's circle i'm just saying there's something to be to be said about that so I'm paying attention to what's going on from a from a compliance perspective, from a regula- regulatory perspective, and that's something that is really, really, really just top of my list, right? Really is top of my list because do you understand how it works is my first question. When you write these laws, are these people understanding of how it works or do they have a whole, a whole staff that tells them how it works? You know, it doesn't take a lot to take a class. It doesn't take a lot to read a book. No, I'm not going to plug my book. I should. Um, but yeah, do, do you understand? You know why? Why just crypto in general was created? Do you understand the history of it? All that kind of stuff. So I am paying attention to that. Something else that I that I was paying attention to, and it cracked me up because I haven't said this name in a long time. Jim Cramer. I know it hurts to even hear it. Hurts to say it. But Jim Cramer came out with something funny, and I think we should talk about it. He said, instead of buying micro strategy stock, you should just go buy Bitcoin. Interesting. Interesting. I'm sitting back and I'm saying, if I was going to buy, you know, um, a Bitcoin or crypto related stock for a reason, right? My reason would be I have crypto, but now I want stock. So why not get a crypto related stock that's soaring, who's probably going to continue to soar because they're going to develop software. Remember, it's a regular company. They're going to develop software like MicroStrategy Orange, just saying to do stuff with that's what i'm talking about just what are you doing what are you what 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 are you doing what are you doing jim what are you, what are you smoking on i'm just i'm just saying if you're buying bitcoin you're buying bitcoin because it's crypto if you're buying a stock you're buying a stock because it's a stock they're doing other things we should be paying attention to that jim just makes me laugh and of course you know i always buy bitcoin if I've got a hundred bucks, I'm buying some Bitcoin and then I'll buy everything else. But that's because I've created a number for crypto. I have a number for stock, a number for options, a number for whatever vehicle that I'm I'm looking at. I have a I have a pot of whatever money I have. I split it up between the spaces that I want to split it up in, and then from there I split it up into what I'm actually purchasing. It's not that difficult. But you know what we should do? That's right. Numbers and again, I didn't put up my watermark. Oh my god, I should get fired. Uh, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's all right, it's all right. They're probably gonna go away soon anyway. So, let me just refresh these numbers for you, real quick. Um, all right, so no huge changes from what I was looking at before. We have the losers going all the way down to about here. It was at 22, so it was a little bit of a change. A little bit of a change. You know, Tuncoin is down five percent. It's down below seven bucks. So yeah, that's not that's not fun. But am I expecting it to go up? Yes. Am I expecting that I should put more in? Nah, I'm probably gonna hold my bag where it is. Um, so Tuncoin is down five. Lido is down six. Um, wormhole. Wormhole had a problem. Somebody asked me about wormhole, and wormhole had a problem. Certic found a a problem with wormhole, and I trust Certic. 
I really do. If you go back to my previous videos, I have a lot of information that, you know, um, we've gotten from Certic that's proven true. None of it was proven false. So I trust Certic. And when they say that there's a small problem, there's a flaw. They said there's a flaw in wormhole. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to stay away from wormhole. So whoever asked me that, forgot who it was. Yeah, I'm staying away from wormhole, period. <laughs> I, I don't like bridges. I really don't like bridges. It's down 7%. I'm looking at render. Here's something. Render's down 7%. I'm actually thinking about picking up some render. Why? Because it's down 7% and it is doing a lot in terms of D-pins or decentralized physical infrastructure networks. That's why I'm interested in it. So I'm, I'm thinking about getting involved with, with, uh, with uh, render, especially since, look at that. It's ranked number 28. It's not bad. It's going to pop into the 20, into the top 25 coins out there. So I'm just saying that's something we should be paying attention to. Um, who else is on here that I'm paying attention to? Nothing because I can't stand WorldCoin. Black Phoenix. I don't know what the heck that is. It, it's, I mean, like, look at that. All-time high, 100%. It's 100% off. And it's down 25%. Just so you're neck. What? Huh? Yeah, I'm not touching that. Somebody would have to pay me. To do that um looking at everybody that's up the list is short stops right here you know i have my five percent rule um that's book of meme not gonna mention the other one floki's up 12 percent. book of meme was 11. um anybody else pepe is up 20 percent and what's funny is i thought about buying pepe the other day and then i was like ah it's kind of overplayed i'll stick with whiff um floki I'm good with that, and I should have. I should have bought. I should have gone with my first idea, and I should have bought. So I, I I'm kind of getting used to, you know, its flow. So I'll sit like that. Anyway, this is Eddie J on crypto. I've got to cut it short today. I hope all is well with you and yours. Have a good one. Bye bye.